Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. Now we're going to be looking about abuse because we see that during the coronavirus pandemic, there was a lockdown issued and there were many, many, many cases of abuse, not just of spouses, but of children. So the statistics of the rise in abuse cases was alarming because there were many calls. Today we're going to be joined by Dr. Babaji De Martins, who is the um, director of the Office of the Public Defender, and he'll be talking to us about how to deal with abuse, what constitutes abuse, and how we can, you know, what remedy abounds for children who are in this category? Do they have help? Or how can you help them? You know someone who is in your neighborhood who is abusing a child that they're supposed to keep in their care. How, how exactly can you help them? Good morning, Dr. Babajide Martins. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Mr. Babajide, hello, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Good morning. Good how morning, sir. How are you? I'm very well, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, so I'd like us to first of all go into, we're looking at care and care for abused children or remedies that are bound for abused children. And I know that your office is an office that works for indigent Nigerians who have legal cases but cannot represent themselves. And a category of people that oftentimes cannot represent themselves are children. And I'd like us to look at abuse. What accounts for abuse? What, what, when we think of abuse, a lot of people think just sexual abuse. But there's more beyond sexual abuse. What are the various kinds of abuse that children have experienced or children can experience? Okay. Um, I think a common notion for abuse is a child being physically or sexually abused. But abuse goes beyond that. I think for purpose of our discussion, anybody who is below 18 is a child. And there are laws that specifically protect children around the issue of um, forced work or slavery or working in industries or factories. So abuse could take all that form. Abuse could also be sending children to work on the street while they are supposed to be in school. All children of school age must mandatorily go to school. That is what is provided for in the law and by the Lagos State Government. So the government is doing its best to ensure that universal basic education provide for all children of school age to attend school. So when you have children of school age that is being denied or prevented from attending school, that amounts to abuse. And when you send them on the streets to work, you know, in traffic or to beg, that amounts to abuse or to make them to work possibly as house app or to work in a factory. All those are different ramifications of child abuse that is well known. And uh, there has been an increase in it of recent. Mm -hmm. And that, that increase could be as a result of, you know, more rigorous step being taken by the government to stem the trend of abuse in our society. And um, in relation to physical, abuse or sexual abuse there has been an increase also because of the um, lockdown where a lot of children are not attending school they are carers of guidance and parents are staying with them you know and that has been a slight increase in the number of children that has been rescued and considering this lockdown i think we've carried out about 10 rescue mission to rescue children that are in danger of being abused or that are being abused, so to speak. So those are the basic ramifications of the forms that abuse take. It could be forced labor, it could be exploitation by not allowing them to go to school, it could be sending them to beg on the street, sending them to work in factory, sending them to, you know, work on the street. All these are forms of abuse, which the government is very, very, bent on preventing our society. And the mandate of the Office of Public Defender includes the need to protect all children, all our children, from all these form of abuse which I've mentioned. In consonance to the you know, law that guides children, no, Section 1 of the Child's Right Law 2015 Lagos State Law says in any decision you are taking involving children, the paramount interest of the children should be taken into consideration. So no, no matter any endeavor that we are talking about, once children are involved, their interests should be of paramount concern. 
And this is why the government is very, very keen on that, Mr. Governor's, you know, um, agenda, the team's agenda that focus on security and governance, our work for within this pillar to ensure that our children are secure, the welfare of our children are taken care, and also all residents that are indigent and uh, that are particularly vulnerable, people like um, citizens living with disabilities. So those, those are my initial comments in relation to abuse. Okay, sir. Um, judging from the things you said, I would like to um, to be clear on the statements you made. You said uh, because we know that uh, children below the ages of eighteen, uh, a child below the age of eighteen, you're a child, and uh, it had been a, a trend sometime in uh, in the country in past country, in the past time that people would uh, parents would willingly give their kids to a relative in uh, the. With, with the notion of going to train probably from uh, the village to Lagos and the child comes to Lagos and he's made to work with uh, yeah. whoever their guardian is and not probably necessarily attend school or they attend school and they still get to work. So would that be abuse? Would that be also categorized as the child being abused? Oh, oh definitely, because that's effectively forced labor and um, is child exploitation. If you have a situation where the parents give their children to guide them, to look after them, and they enroll them in school and mm -hmm. take care of them as if they are their own children, of course, that would not amount to abuse. But when they are brought into the state under the pretext of sending them to school or bringing them up, and they refuse to do that, that is definitely an, an abuse and is in breach of the human rights of that child, so to say. So it is very, very common of recent where you have people that will bring children from the hinterland, you know, to the state and under the pretext of wanting to educate them or mm -hmm. bring them up. Mm -hmm. it, it, it amounts to abuse because nobody is allowed to send a child for child labor or enforced labor. So it, it is abuse. Okay. You know, flowing from what Adewa had just asked you, I want, to, I want to give practical examples. So in the cases of people who have helps, because these days it's not abnormal to have house helps in Nigeria. And there are people who yes. genuinely need these helps, but then they contract the services of children under the ages of 18 to help them probably with looking after the baby or cleaning the house. Because as I, I am certain that some people who are watching the show right now have house helps who are 15 years, 16 years. 17 years, and they've probably paid agents who have given them the permission to, you know, they pay a certain fee, then they pay agency. So basically, they are, they are transacting, they're doing business with these children. Sometimes oh, the yeah. children get the money, sometimes the money is sent to the parent. Does that also yeah. fall under the category of child abuse? Oh, definitely. It falls under the category of abuse because there could be work opportunity within training for young person, that is person between 14 and 16. Mm -hmm. If you send them to a recognized institution to learn a vocation, that is acceptable. That is the only work that children are allowed to do, work that relates to the vocational training which they are having. For example, if they are learning to be a fashion designer or a capping tree work, they are doing any other kind of in a recognized institution vocational training. That would not amount to abuse. But when you take them away from their parents and send them to work as house help, that is abuse because they are supposed to be in school at that age. All children are supposed to be in primary school from age of five to 11. They're supposed to be in primary school. Then from 11, they're supposed to be in junior secondary school until they get to higher institution. The, what is not compulsory is education at higher level. For, for, for primary school and post-primary school is mandatory under our law that children should be sent to school. So when you bring children from the hinterland and bring them to Lagos State and you are using them as house air, it's illegal. You are not allowed to do that under the law because you are supposed to send them to school. Compulsory universal education is, is of utmost importance. And the state government is, is, is leading in the provision of 
education for our primary school peoples and secondary school peoples. And anybody who deny children going to school is in breach of the law. It's as simple as that. It might sound, it might sound um, strange, but that is the position of the law. People who are of, of children, children that are of school age, are supposed to be in school and failure to send them to school. Child abuse. Okay. Um, I think we have a little. Dr. Network. Babajidi, are you there? Oh, it's unfortunate. We'll try to see if we can connect back with him. Uh, but th these are very valid points that were yes. raised because many people yes. have house helps. A lot. You know, and it's, for them, it's business. It was the first thing when I was thinking of getting a help, the first thing I did was make sure this person is not lower than, younger than 18. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want to, in any way, shape, or form, be in contravention or yeah. you know, contravene the provisions of the law. Mm -hmm. And it's also something that, that reflects what we've been talking about. Even the Amadjuri system, the people who have this young children, the original intent was to send them to Malam to bring them up in the way of Islamic Bring studies. Them, but yes, then, Islamic studies. they've turned them into beggars. We beggars see them in Lagos everywhere. On the street. And when he comes back, I'd like to ask him what provisions we have as regards social services. Because mm -hmm. in the UK and in the US, even if you as a parent don't step up to your responsibility... To train your child properly, yes. Child services will come they and will collect come your, and child take from your child from you. It's why children yeah. abroad can threaten their children, their parents, that if you beat me, I'll call 911. I'll call, yeah. Once they call 911, they'll collect your children from you. I think social services will, mm -hmm. you know, will mm -hmm. take over... There, the, there the, it has a, a, a working system. They, from, from childbirth, a child has a social security number already. So you already know that, okay, the government is responsible for the child's upbringing. And if, as the parents, they don't uh, work right, they take, a, take away the child from the parents. Okay, um, Dr. Babajide is back. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you. All right, All right so before, when you were away briefly, we're talking about social services and how in the UK and the US and other parts of the world, we see that there's an adequate plan for every child, such that even the parent, if you don't do your work as a parent, if you don't look after them, or if the court can prove at any point that you are unfit to be a parent, maybe because of drug addiction or your inability to provide for the child, the child will be taken away from you and put, you know, given over to social services. You know? And we don't know if that kind of arrangement exists in Nigeria for parents who cannot look after their children mm -hmm. or for children who have been living under abuse. Is there any provision for them to be taken and cared, oh. after, cared for by the government? Oh, definitely. There is ample provision under the child's right law. And one of our mandates is that any child that is in danger, we do make emergency application to the court to remove the child and keep them with a family relative who could provide an enabling environment for the upkeep and welfare of that child. Often the law would prefer the family relative first, but when we don't have a a feasible family relative that is fit for purpose, we will now go to outside of the family and keep them in social care homes. We do have homes owned by the Lagos State Government and is run by the Ministry of Youth and Social Development. And also we do have some other private homes owned by um, NGOs. So we work in collaboration with the Ministry of Youth and Social Development to place children that are in danger, that are in need of emergency care in all these places. And that, that, that is the provision. Also, you know, the, the need to take care of children is all government's responsibility, including local government authority as well. Mm -hmm. Because for every child that lives in the local government area, the duty is on that local government to take into consideration the interests of the child in providing social amenities, you know, education and care for the children. But in a situation where a particular local government is not able to do that, that's why the state government, you know, under the, um, the, the Ministry for Youth and Social Development have that primary responsibility to do that. And we also do that and we work in conjunction with the Ministry of uh, Youth and Social Development as well. We also work in conjunction with the um, domestic violence and sexual response team. This is an interagency body that is made up of different professionals from Ministry of Health, Education, you know, Ministry for Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, 
Mirabel and all those, so that they can provide like a one-stop shop in catering for any child that is being abused. Because at times when a child is being abused and is being removed from the um, from the abuse, there might be need to provide medical attention in the following mm -hmm. abuse. There might be need to change the school. There might be need to have social workers that will visit the new parent, the foster parent, or social workers that will be placed with the child at the at the at the home where he or she has been kept. So there is need to have this one stop um, shop, so to say, and that is why the the, the the work of the domestic violence and sexual responsive is very very vital. And my office is also part of that committee as well. So I also sit with that committee in taking decisions in relation to children that are in danger. So we do have um, similar provisions that what, what we have in, in UK and other, other crime as well for right. any child that is, that is in danger. All right, sir. So um, b before you, you leave us, sir, it's, um, it's, we would like to know, for a child who is uh, probably in a situation like this, and uh, for a parent or, or someone who knows this is happening to a child around them, lead us through the process yes. of how they can reach out to, to your office to be okay to, because you said you, you, yes. are, you carried out some certain uh, rescue missions. So how does, yes. how does it happen? How can someone reach out? Just lead us through that yes. process. Apart from going through our social media platform, I think the easier way is going through our toll-free line, okay. which is 070 70 It's a toll-free line. Okay. Anybody who has information about a child that is in danger can call in confidence and speak to our dedicated officer who has been assigned to man this number and give the information. The more information we get, the better we can get to the child in mm. terms of giving, giving assistance. And apart from that as well, our social media platform as well is also readily available for people who have access to social media platform. We're on Facebook on OPD Lagos. We're on Twitter on OPD Lagos as well. And our website is opd at lagosministryofjustice.org. So all this information, any of these platforms, social media platforms, once information is provided through those platforms, we have dedicated officer who would access the information immediately and pass it on to the relevant, you know, department, yet relevant units within my office. There we have different units that deals with the issue of child protection. Principally, we have the family and child justice unit that deals with all issues that relates to court application. Then you have the, the rescue team. Within the rescue team, you have a number of social workers. You have a director who is a very senior social worker that is also charged with rescuing children who are in danger. All so right. those are, those are the, Okay, so just so we're clear, can you please take the social media handles again? Yeah, and the phone number, oh, just so we're uh, clear. Okay then. Uh, for Facebook, OPD Lagos, Twitter, the handle is OPD Lagos as well. Okay. And um, for for the website, the website yes. oh, oh, I think uh, we're still having some technical issues. Okay, uh, but I think I was able to get you know, the majority of it. Yeah. So we have the phone number yes. that he put out there. We have uh, the on, so, on social. You have the phone number. Yes, I have okay. it. So, so if you know any child that is being abused, and when we talk about abuse. We mean sexual abuse, physical abuse. More, very recently, we saw a story it's of a woman. Dangerous. Okay, we, we still have Dr. Babajide Martins on, right? Okay, sir. Yeah, w w welcome back, sir. Okay, we had some technical So you, you issues, talked so about you Facebook and Twitter at OPD Lagos, then the website, www.opdlagos.org. Yes. Okay. OPD Lagos. And for people who have access to email, they can also send email to us at OPD at opdlagos.org. That's our email, email address. address. Okay. Some people might not be to um, social media savvy. They mm -hmm. just want to send an email. Mm -hmm. They could do that through that email that I've given. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Thank All right, you so sir. much, sir, for you know your time and for sharing this with us. We will make sure that we make announcements like this, and it's important.
people don't have this information. So, of course, there are many children that will be languishing now in abuse. But thank yeah. you very much for your time and for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank All right, you so sir. Much. Thank you very much. We've been joined by Dr. Babajide Martins, who is the director of the Office of the Public Defender. What they do is to ensure that legal aid is available to indigent Nigerians who want this aid or who deserve this aid but cannot afford it. And today we looked at child abuse, the way out. Now, if you know any child that is being abused physically, abused sexually, you know, any form of abuse, there is help for the child. Recently, there was a story of a woman who had locked a child inside, uh, she had beat the child and locked the child inside an apartment for three days without feeding the child. When you know of stories like that, these people have neighbors. You are neighbors to this person. You see that this person is, you know, starving their child, maltreating their child. Please reach out for help and call these numbers. Uh, the toll-free line is 070-8060-1080. I'll take that again. 070-8060-1080. Or you can tweet at them at OPD Lagos on Twitter and on Instagram, as well as Facebook. The website is www.opdlagos.org. Or you can send an email to opd at opdlagos.org. Dot org. These are the details here. I hope that this would help some child out there. We'll be joined again by the Office of the Public Defender next week, and uh, we'll be talking about some other very important story or important issue affecting human rights.